What is happening, everybody? Welcome to episode 133 of the Games and Grouse podcast. My name is Sonny G, and I'm here, as always, with Finn Steele. Hello. And Steve. Hello. How's it going, guys? You good? Good, thank you. Yeah. You got me at a different yeah. angle today. I automatically yeah. looked over there at the camera when you started. Mm. It's not there anymore. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you got me head on today. I think that's a better look for you. Yeah, we match now. I have yeah. no idea it before, so I'll move stuff around and stop put it right there. There we go. This means nothing to anybody listening to the audio <laughs> version of this. If you're watching the video, yeah. then you get the full view of Finn's amazing face. Our beautiful faces, yeah. Your yeah. beautiful face. Yeah, I cover a lot of mine with a microphone, so you can't see from like moustache down. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I have to mute mine because I was like, it was all microphone over my face. So I have to mute mine now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what Ofcom complaints we get from this episode. So you might have to put the microphone back. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. I haven't shaved in yeah. so long. Look at my, I keep needing to shave, and I thought I keep running out of time. Now, what's the point? I've got like a big old beard as well, a big old ginger beard. Well, yeah. And Steve's got a big beard as well. It must look like a patchy shit beard. Mm. Yeah. I think your beard looks just, fine, Finn. Just leave it, Finn. It'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the patches all come out. Like, they, you know, hopefully they'll yeah. just like grow a bit and you get a full beard. Yeah. One day when you're older, it'll be a full beard. Yeah, when, yeah. when I grow up, it'll be a full beard. When you... <laughs> yeah, when you grow up, you'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. I hope in um, about 40 episodes time, you've still not shaved and it's just like a massive Jesus like type beard. That, <laughs> yeah. that would be incredible. That would be it would incredible. be so good. I would love it. <laughs> I'll put it some words uh, at work for my boss. You can take the thing for a girl. Can you shave? You look ridiculous. You're scaring away the customers. I keep looking over there at the camera. It's not there anymore. <laughs> yeah. Not, people are going to wonder what you're looking at. Yeah. So hello. <laughs> where my camera used to be <laughs> Steve you good yeah not bad thanks mate um a bit tired this morning I don't I don't know what tired. Was yeah I'd, uh, but but had a few cups of morning brown and away I went. yeah <laughs> happy days <laughs> <Guess what? laughs> yeah I had a couple of morning browns this morning I feel I feel like I, I need it like I need I need coffee to get me through that's what morning brown is for anyone listening who's thinking, what are they talking about? <laughs> but um yeah, I, I need coffee to like to to keep me going throughout the day. Otherwise, I genuinely do not think I would survive. Yeah. I don't yeah. think I I don't think I be, became as reliant on needing coffee in the morning until I probably hit my thirties. I enjoyed mm. a cup of coffee, you know what I mean? But yeah, now course. it's now it's literally a, I, I can't function. Give me coffee. Yeah, yeah so, it's like life uh, and death. Goes, mm, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, I think absolutely. I'm I'm absolutely addicted to coffee. Like if I don't have one in the morning, I can feel it for the rest of the day. Oh mm. god, yeah, me too. Oh, yeah. I, I'm totally with you there. If I like leave the house in a rush, like I have to get a coffee from somewhere before yeah. my working day starts because um otherwise my working day will not start. <laughs> yeah, I do have a coffee machine at work. Just give me coffee. Dish, dish. <laughs> nice, you get it for free. Uh, God, no, don't give us that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, maybe, like... maybe I maybe I'm giving your your employer too much credit there. <laughs> yeah, so it's probably Costa but... that can that Come control on. it, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. But hey, other coffee places are available, just, just yeah. so you know. Costa, you can... <laughs> I love Costa. I, I mean, to be honest, I, I've not had a Costa for a while because it's, well, it's closed for the True. most part. I can't okay. actually get to it. So I, just not like, I don't know, there might be, but it just feels like an effort because the shopping mm. center where I live, where Costa is based, um, you can't actually access it. Oh. Yeah, the stupid thing is in the Hinkley, like there's two Costa, Costas and they're both open for the idiots, not wearing masks. So I'm just like, I see it, I'm like, I'm not going in there. I'm not stupid. Mm. Come on now. So I just uh, go to Greg's and yeah. uh, okay, get, get, get a coffee in the morning. Yeah. It's a good coffee as well. They don't do skinny latte, which is my preferred choice of morning brown, but um, yeah. they skinny latte. do. Yeah, they do uh, a standard latte, and I, I'm all for that. That's fine. Yeah. I, mean, I tried a um, salted, no, what was it? A spiced something or rather, spiced caramel or something latte. Oh, uh, nice. No, it's horrible. It's gross. Oh, wouldn't you didn't like it? <laughs> no. Wouldn't recommend. Zero out of 10. I thought I drank it because you know, I paid for it, but. 
Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> suffer but, through it. Like, mm, yeah, I don't much. like this, but I'm going to drink it anyway. <laughs> Down in one, <laughs> burnt in his mouth, his throat, everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then just drinks a whole <laughs> bottle of mouthwash after because he hated it so much. Yeah. But I normally go for a latte or a cappuccino or something. Excellent. At least you know, you know what kind of coffee that we all like to go for. Steve, what, what's your uh, choice of coffee? Well, I uh, I just make a standard coffee these days. Like yeah. if I've if I'm uh, I'll, I'll take my own stuff to work because the stuff at work is dross. So I just <laughs> take my take my own stuff. Uh, it's lovely. Um, I've I've gone off lattes a bit. Too much milk, which I know Too is a lot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. A bit milk, like I, like there's not enough. There's not enough caffeine in it. Like, yeah. Right. Okay. My first cup of um, more is like full black coffee to wake me up. Yeah. And then yeah. In the day, I'll have like latte or something. So if I do go to anywhere like Costa or or, or any or a sort of local coffee house, I'll just a flat white. That does me good. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, listeners, tell us what your favourite type of morning brown is, <laughs> and uh, what, what gets you through the day, coffee wise. You decaf, then you're banned. Yeah, no one has decaf. What? I don't, no I don't do understand you? decaf. I don't see the point. No. I'm well, sure coffee decaf. tastes fine, but you know it's meant to get you through the day. I guess it. I guess it's for those that can't have caffeine because of Wimp. heart palpitations and stuff. <laughs> Oh, fuck that. <laughs> Just get a coffee in your life and get your ass through the day. <laughs> Palpitations <Yeah>. and all. <laughs> oh, it's oh, definitely coffee, worth it. Speaking coffee's good for the soul. <laughs> and the heart. <laughs> mm. There we go. Right. I, d- I don't understand. So just Ooh. I'm, I'm going to carry on this Games, Brats okay. and Coffee podcast. <laughs> um, I don't understand these people that are reliant on energy drinks over... Mm. A good old cup of coffee. Energy drinks are basically poison. Full of just <laughs> mm. crap. Yeah, it's just garbage. I don't, get, I don't, I don't get it. Oh, I can't get through the day without a can of Monster at the start of the day. Yeah, yeah. I don't like get seeing people down. walk around with a can of Monster. I don't, you know, I, if I have a can of energy drink, I'll have it at home. Like, so I do like an energy drink, a sugar-free energy drink. I don't want to, you mm. know, mm. literally die of a heart attack. Um, <laughs> drinking an entire kind of monster or red bull i will have sugar free yeah yeah That's cool. like, which is not the same as the decaf argument fyi um <laughs> but I, I don't like you know it, it looks like a can of beer it looks like proper and i hate to use the term but it looks chavy mm. yeah yes chavy. absolutely yeah so yeah but yeah there's nothing wrong with you to drink but like they're basically one of the worst things you can put in your body and they're so unhealthy um yeah every now and then it's not too bad but don't rely on it it's bad there you go health Bad advice thing. from finn mm. um <laughs> do not G- gq man of the year over here so yeah, yeah. No. just saying just uh, before before we went on air finn also um advised that anal beads were something else that you shouldn't put in your body it's bad bad bad, bad times you know. yeah he says yeah. they really they really hurt it messed his insides up a little bit yeah that's good man you being so bad times <laughs> you have to drink energy drink to dissolve the anal beads. <laughs> exactly. Once they're lost in there, <laughs> they probably, they probably yeah. would do that as well. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, if you drink a full can of like purple can monster, I'm not even sure what's in that shit. But so many different. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think they would probably dissolve any anal beads that you insert too far into your body. Yeah, probably. Yeah. We have got off to a fantastic start. Yeah, yesterday. 10 minutes in. We haven't even talked about anything that we would usually talk about. It's well, been all about. coffee and, you know, for a little bit, anal beads as well. Games, graps and coffee. I suppose it's better than uh, the the thing that I told you the other day. Do you remember the auto captions that you get on Facebook that obviously couldn't quite understand your dialect or oh, accent? Yeah. And it said, and it, and it it was said, games and crafts, wasn't it? Welcome to the yeah. games and crafts podcast <laughs> yeah. welcome to the games and crafts podcast it said like yeah go back finn if you haven't watched it go onto facebook and I, I can't remember if it was the actual podcast or whether it was the pre-show before the pre-show we did mm, for possibly uh the raw rumble but it said yeah. welcome to the games and crafts podcast oh right interesting that's, that's a different podcast we do come to the, come yeah, to the... yeah. I, I, yeah I, I mean i don't think exclusive. i've ever done anything i don't think i've ever done anything crafty in my entire life <laughs> yeah me and Finn do a, a crafts podcast and it's exclusive on our Patreon. So yeah, if yeah, you exactly. want to head over to there, give us 40 pound a month and uh, 
<laughs> what am I on about? <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what have we been on about for 10 minutes? 10 minutes oh, this and is 13 true. seconds we've been recording for. And we've talked about coffee, anal beads, and crafts. <laughs> yeah. the, the, People the have turned is, off. The, well, the reality is, if you're, if you're listening to this podcast and expecting, you know, observer radio levels of wrestling insight, you're not going to get yeah. it. So, no, that's true, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like... Um, if you listen, do listen to this podcast on a regular basis, you're still here now because this is what you used to. Mm, it's true. But I think otherwise people switched off five minutes ago. Yeah, sorry guys. Their loss. Yeah, their it loss. is indeed <laughs> their loss. Right, let's really? start as we always do. Finn Steele. No, that's wrong. That that's is the wrong, thing, wrong thing. thing that I've put up there. So <laughs> you fucked up. This one, this one instead. <laughs> what are... <laughs> Um, Finn, what have you been playing this week? Um, well, I finally finished uh, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Platinum Trophy. Congratulations. Thank Platinum. you very much. Uh, give thank yourself you. a round of applause, Finn. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Button, there we go. Woo! Woo! I love that how that how excited that guy is in the background there. <laughs> so excited. Like, full on, just so, so happy. Like, woo! Yeah. Finn, uh, did you? How did you play it the second time around? Did you do performance ray tracing? I know we had uh, this conversation yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. I'll put on full 60 frames a second. It's beautiful. Very smooth. It's stunning, um, isn't it? So good. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but, put the game on easy difficulty. Plus, I'll do it again on New Game Plus. Yep, that's what um, I did. Yeah. And yeah, hell of a game. Love playing with Miles. Story's great. And yeah, 10 out of 10, for sure. Um, yeah, other than that... Pretty much, yeah. I did play Wrestling Empire briefly, played the tutorial, so I can know how the gameplays. How did you feel about it? Say again? How did you feel about it? Uh, yeah, I like it. I like the N64 vibe that's got going on. Um, like, like, draws like interesting, very like No Mercy, things like that. Yeah, uh, and yeah, I look forward to getting it. I'm planning on playing it again later, getting like stuck into it. You gonna um, start a full on career? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, is there a way to like make your own character without editing one that's already on there? But I couldn't figure it out. Uh, yeah, when you start your career, um, mm. I think it gives you the option to do that. Oh, okay. That's cool. Um, because I didn't have to edit an existing wrestler or anything like that. Okay, that's fine. Cool. Um, and that I, I installed, but I've yet to play Ratchet and Clank. Uh, I do again plan to play it tonight. Um, that was your homework as well. It was. I just didn't get time. Mm. Uh, Miles Morales took a little bit longer than... I to got. be honest, this week has actually gone so quick. I'm yeah. not surprised you've not been able to get your homework done. Yeah, I've been um, working this week as well. So that's been fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, Don't worry. Fun. Well, at least you've installed it. That's that's step one. Of step home. one's installed. Yeah, it's called. Cool. It's on the basic bus collection. Um, it's really cool. That's a great collection, by the way. Yeah, I so think. Um, you know, you know what's so cool at the minute is the amount of uh, good shit that you can get for paying very little for. Exactly. Like, yeah. People, you know, the consoles. Yep, they were both four hundred and fifty pounds a piece. Um, but if you pay for the subscription. The amount you don't have to pay for games is really quite astonishing. I mean, the PlayStation Plus collection has, you know, all the good stuff. So if you've recently just gone to PlayStation, you've got Uncharted on there, you've got God of War, uh, Detroit, uh, Resident Evil 7, Mm -hmm. Ratchet and Clank, you know, so much good stuff. Yeah, Persona 5, you know, there's just so much good stuff on there. You know, you probably actually don't need to buy games. Yeah, pretty much. I just noticed on Game Pass they added uh, Wreckfest. It's something I really wanted to play. Yeah, yeah, they've like just added that. that to Game Pass. And, you know, you couple that with the really good games that you're getting on PlayStation Plus every month at the minute as well. You know, you've just got yeah. Destruction All-Stars, uh, Control, uh, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But there's, you know, it's just, it's great. And then obviously Game Pass is fantastic as well. Mm. We talked about it ad nauseum on this podcast with just how good Game Pass really is. And Steve mm. is obviously, you know, gaining the fruits of that at the minute as well so uh it's yeah it's it's really great sorry for it i didn't mean to uh, go off on a, a little tangent there about how great new consoles are that's right even on bc like your epic game store giving away free games like gta5 yeah. probably it's pretty amazing um, i can afford to give that away because um everybody's already bought it exactly pretty <laughs> much yeah <laughs> like, here, have it for free it's like why we already have it like three <laughs> times yeah um yeah other than that i think it's about it uh game wise how about you guys Steve, we'll start with you. Not a huge amount. I've not really got stuck into to anything that's, you know, where I've been on it for absolutely hours and progressed through anything. I need to get back onto Ori. 
uh, and finish that. I have no idea how far into it I am, but I do want to finish it. So I dipped into Forza uh, again for the first time in a while. Had a couple of races with my brother. Um, played a bit of FIFA career mode. And then Animal Crossing. Just chilled out yesterday. Played Animal Crossing for about six hours. Cool. Um, just nice. Six hours? I don't know. It felt like it probably, you know, it probably wasn't far off. I, I put it down occasionally because I've got to sort the kids out and all that. But um, yeah, I had a fair bit to do on it. So uh, that's it, really. Nothing, nothing, uh, nothing major. What about yourself? Um, I've been on my Switch mostly this week. I've uh, been playing through, I'm still playing through Super Mario 3D World. Awesome. Really enjoying it. It's just so good. Uh, it really is just so like good. It, it's, it, it like combines different Mario games and just throws it into one. Yeah. It's really good. There's like nods to all sorts of different stuff. You've got like bits of Captain Toad treasure tracker in there, which is, um, which is great. And you know, there's like nods to Mario Kart in there in the old, uh, the older sort of 2d side scrolling Mario games and also the 3d ones like Mario 64 sunshine galaxy, that type of thing. And, you know, you can play as four different characters as well, which I think is really cool. You can play as Mario, Luigi, uh, peach and toad. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's different power-ups that you can get as well. It's just so great, and I I highly recommend it. I still haven't checked out Bowser's Fury yet, but by all accounts, it is very good. Uh, but yeah, I really, really do love Super Mario 3D World, and I'm uh, I'm really like engrossed with it at the moment. Awesome, good stuff. Um, been playing more Wrestling Empire, and something interesting happened on there yesterday, um, which is actually horrifying. <laughs> yeah, so. Right. Currently, I'm a member of Strong Style Wrestling and um, uh, Hardcore Holly and RVD, known as Dominator in the game with the Tag Team Champions. Cool. Um, so yesterday we had like a, a confrontation, like in the ring, which is like a, you know, like a, a promo is cut and then you have a fight. Um, yeah. <laughs> basically, uh, RVD's character climbed up to the top rope, and I punched him, and he fell off, uh, went through the announce table. Nice. Um, his whole uh, energy bar went red, which would usually indicate um, an injury occurring to uh, the character in question. Um, okay. I won the confrontation, went backstage, and then the note, the like, the news feed said that um, the 39 year old was unable to be resuscitated after his injuries and died. <laughs> yeah, what? Murderer. <laughs> Murderer. Yeah. So- <laughs> So RVD's right. character in my career mode is is dead. Yeah, he killed him. <laughs> You're a murderer. <laughs> yeah, I to, like they they basically blamed me for the death, um, and said if you pay six thousand dollars for the funeral costs, it will soften the blow a little bit. <laughs> well, that's all right then. You know. So naturally, yeah. I coughed up the six thousand dollars, but you know that's going to be on my, you know, on my career record books forever. Yeah, murderer. I mean, that's quite interesting that that's part of the game. You know, yeah. we've, we've been quite critical of 2K mm-hmm. games over the years and how they're not overly in depth. Career modes are pretty poor. Yeah. I'm not sure I would want that in <laughs> a wrestling game, though. I think it's a bit. Very much. Well, I couldn't believe it. Like, I had to like read much. it twice. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. okay, they're probably not to resuscitate him. He'll be back in a couple of weeks. Then I really read it again. I was like, whoa, Dominator's passed away. <laughs> 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 Rip. I mean, I've seen it. I've, I've seen it on in videos where, and I don't know whether it's fake or or, or what, but where people have um, their their manager has or, or their, their manager has died in FIFA, so they get the sack. Really, and the, career, and the career mode just ends. Yeah. Oh wow! No, I've never seen that before. Is that like on like when you create your own player and I play think, through the career mode that way? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know whether, whether it's real or not, or whether it's just these. YouTubers doing it for the likes and, and for the clickbait or whatever, but yeah, very strange, strange thing to add into a game. Yeah, it, game, it's, it, effectively, it was something that was very surprising. Also, you can you, sometimes you get these challenges from the general managers to like, we need you to increase your attitude by a certain date, otherwise we might have to give your spot to somebody else. Mm. And then somebody you would usually approach you backstage and ask if you wish to buy steroids to enhance your attributes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, I did. Yeah, because I didn't want to lose my job. But um, you know, I, you know, I thought killing RVD would be enough 
to cost me my job. Apparently not, but um, yeah. So we're, we're, st- <laughs> we're still we're still going. It's a tough business, guys. It's yeah, a tough it's business. Yeah, it's like, well, he's dead, and then the next like a couple of notifications after they'd crown new tag team champions. <laughs> Obviously, Hardcore Holly's had that belt ripped off him because his tag team partner, you know, he's brown bread. Couldn't, yeah. couldn't recover. Yeah. And now we've got new tag team champions. Wow, fair play. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's that. Um, <laughs> before we started recording, I uh, played an hour or so of Control. Awesome. Uh, Ultimate Edition on PS5. And... You know, for again, this is this goes back to what I was saying before. If you know you've got a new console and you pay, you know, the regular subscription cost, and you get these games for nothing, you know, Control Mm -hmm. was not only one of the best games of the previous console generation, but now with ray tracing and enhanced performance, you know, frame wise. It's now one of the best games of this current generation. And the fact that you can get it for free on PlayStation Plus is amazing. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, so I'm playing through that again now, and I'm really enjoying it. The setting is just so dark and so beautiful. And like for me, super artistic um, in the way that it's been done and the way that the lighting is presented in the game. Um, and I also think the, the the weapon that you use is one of the most innovative weapons in all of video games, just the way that yeah. the gun changes and the way that you, it changes when you upgrade. Uh, I just think it's a, a phenomenal game. I thought it before it was my game of the year in 2019, and I still think it's fantastic now, and it's even better with all of its new enhancements. So, yeah, yeah I'm currently going through Control, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the Platinum for it. I played it before on Xbox One when I first played it and now I'm playing yeah. through it on PlayStation and I aim to get the platinum for it. It's just wow. a, just a, a really fantastic game. Really, really fantastic. Yeah. Also picking up objects and throwing at enemies never gets old. It's no, old. not at all. Yeah. I, that's the thing as well. I think the combat is so varied, uh, like because obviously, you know, the changes that you can make to the weapon and also you've got the melee combat and also the, you know, the fact that you can throw, pick anything up, literally anything and throw it at your enemies and yeah, they all cool. react sort of different, to you using different types of attacks and it's it's really great so if you've not played control uh that it's worth playing it is on game pass as well it's the mm. normal edition not the uh ultimate edition but um if you know the ultimate edition is worth picking up i would suggest anyway because you get the full game with all of its enhancements and the dlc packaged in as well so if you've not played it definitely do play it. it's uh it's very very good awesome cool good yeah time. so that's uh, that's pretty much all i've been playing um yeah but just been dipping in and out of switch and i've not really had my playstation on all week but i'm still just really enjoying gaming really really enjoying it just uh anything i play i'm just i'm just really happy with at the minute i know it sounds probably like a, a stupid thing to say because you should be entertained by games anyway but yeah everything i play at the minute i'm just i'm just really into really enjoying awesome good stuff yeah good stuff so um Let's move on to gaming news. And uh, yeah. Finn, I'll let you lead the way here. All right. So we had a big, big week of, of uh, gaming news this week. Main thing being the Nintendo Direct that happened. Lots of news coming out of that. Um, some Nintendo fans weren't happy. They were expecting big, big things, um, but didn't get them. I think they said their exp- expectations were way too high. Um, Same with anything, though, right? <laughs> that's a good point, yeah. It's like it's just a random Nintendo Direct, like mid February, like announced a couple of days ago. There was never going to be any like massive news coming from it. Um, but they got you know, there's going to be other news coming. There's more directs coming, no doubt, through the year. And they're not going to like blow their load all at once. They're not going to announce everything. Like here's new Zelda, here's new Metroid, here's new Pokemon or whatever. They're going to spread it out. So it's coming. Good news is coming. Good things are coming. Just be patient. Definitely. I mean, they even alluded to it during the direct. Yeah, exactly. So Breath of the Wild 2 is com- news is coming. But for now, here's this stuff. So yeah, just wait. Patience. Yeah, just be patient. <laughs> uh, cool. So let's go through what they announced. Um, is a courtesy of uh, Pocket Lint's website. He's got <laughs> through all the uh, interesting website name, but it's got all the news here. How did you uh, find these websites? Google. <laughs> just oh, Google okay, it. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cool. So first thing, I don't know if it's in order or not, but the first thing I've got on here is an expansion pass for High World Warriors, Age of Calamity, mm-hmm. and new, uh, new characters, new areas, and things like that. It looks very cool. If you're into that game, 
go ahead. I'm totally be excited for that. It's a game. It's a game I wouldn't really wanted to get into, but I just haven't had time and not got so many like, games. I'm probably not going to this point. Especially Dynasty Warriors, but Zelda. Yeah, yeah. It's only like a few unique touches. Looks very cool. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I uh, also announced a full guys ultimate knockout is coming to Twitch finally. Yeah. Uh, they also announced it's coming to uh, Xbox. Uh, the yep. Twitter account saying you know coming to Xbox as well. Yeah. At the same time, so that's very cool. Yep, really cool. Uh, cool game. game for Twitch, I think that. Yeah, yeah, perfect game for Switch. Like play it. Yeah. Let me go. How many but, times do we say that over the years since Switch has been out? What's it been out? <laughs> three years now, three, four years. Yeah. Um, to be fair, most games are perfect for Switch. Like any game you can play on the go is good. I agree. Yeah, I absolutely yeah. agree. Um, they announced a game called Famicom Detective Club. It's coming to uh, America and Europe. Finally, it's a game that was originally on the Nintendo or Famicom disc system, which was exclusive to Japan. Um, so an old, old game getting remastered for new hardware for, for uh, yeah, for the cool. West. Finally, get to play uh, it. It's like a detective based, um, sort of like a visual novel sort of thing, I guess, but detective based and just very cool. I do like detective kind of games, like figuring out it's funny. Games. It is funny that you say that because Denzel texted me during the Nintendo Direct and said, Famicom Detective Club sounds like the most Finn game ever. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, he nailed it. Um, <laughs> I do like set of games. I do like old school games and I do like, you know, well written original novels occasionally. So, uh, yeah, why the hell not? Looks like my kind of thing. Yeah, cool. Sounds good. Good times. Uh, they also announced the Hades physical release coming. It's already out on Switch, but now we've got like a physical edition on the way. Really yeah, I cool. really want to play Hades. It looks great. It really does look great. Um, yeah. It's like a dungeon crawler, isn't it? Yeah, dungeon crawler made by the same guys who made Bastion. Um, it's pretty much uh, nominated for every game of the year yeah. <laughs> Award last last year. Um, that's very. I really want to play that. I want to. I want to wait until it comes to like PlayStation. Cause I'm sure eventually it will. Like I want to get this, but also want to wait. So I'm like torn between. You know, do I want it now? Do I want to wait until it comes to PlayStation? Yeah, and it definitely will come to PlayStation. There's no two ways about that. I think um, yeah. they'd be stupid not to because of how popular it is. And obviously, there will be PlayStation gamers that want to play it. So, yeah, I mean, I would wait, especially if it's something you want to play and get the trophies for. I'd maybe wait. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I will. Uh, they also announced a game called Knockout City, which is an online based dodgeball game uh, coming to Switch. Of course, because yeah. everybody's asked for that. Exactly. <laughs> made by the guys who made Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, interestingly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Coming out this May. Looks Which fun. rules, by the way, Mario Kart Home Circuit? Yeah, it looks very fun. If I had space for it, I'd give it a try, but I don't. Cats hate it. <laughs> I bet, yeah. Pretty exactly cats. Um, cool. The big thing they announced is something I'm very excited for. It's The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. Come to Switch. Mm-hmm. One, of the, one of my favorite Zelda games, I think. Underrated. Really? Hmm. A lot of people didn't like it because they didn't like swinging their arms around because they're lazy. Yeah, uh, but I really, really enjoyed it. It's the earliest game in like the timeline, the Zelda timeline. It like talks about what well, goes into like the details of how the Master Swords and stuff was created. If we're into that kind of thing, and yeah, look forward cool. to playing that game. And I, it's pretty much guaranteed that you know Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD will come to the Switch because they've already got it. It's already out on Wii U. So there's no reason why. The winter's brought it out. Brought it yeah, isn't it um, some sort of Zelda anniversary this year as well? Uh, yeah, twenty fifth, twenty fifth anniversary of Zelda and Metroid as well. Yeah, so I think to celebrate the twenty fifth anniversary, I think uh, Wind Waker HD and what was the other one you mentioned? Sorry, uh, Twilight Princess. Yeah, I think uh, we'll probably get maybe some sort of collection in the same vein as uh, Mario three D All Stars. Yeah, I hope so. It'd be nice. Be a good way to do it. Wind Waker's the uh, one with the like the cell shaded animation, isn't it? Yeah, one of GameCube. Yeah, really, really good. Cool. Um, what else we got? So, also announced a new golf game, Mario Golf Super Rush. Hell yeah! Awesome, can't, can't be a bit Mario Golf. I did actually dip, you know, I forgot to mention it, but I did actually dip into Mario Tennis Aces again this week. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, I've, I'm just playing through the, the the adventure mode, just like a little story mode. It's, cool. I feel like they could just shoehorn Mario into anything in any situation, and it will yeah. just be it will just be good. Shoehorn, shoehorn them into like pet expenses as well, for that work. Mario, there you go. <laughs> that's yeah. really cool. Quality. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But you're Sean's job. Couldn't resist. That's nice. <laughs> Very cool. Um, yeah, so also, you know, it's talked about there's going to be a story mode in this, which is cool. Single player story. Um, the rush mode looks really good as well. Yeah, like, oh, well, yeah, like winning after they got ball. Yeah, 
I think that's going to be great. I'm definitely going to get that. I love, yeah. I love those kind of games. Um, and I, the Mario sports games are always very good. Mm. Uh, like Mario Golf, Mario Tennis, all play really well. Probably better than actual sports games, especially that's the tennis true. one. You know, at this point, because there's no virtual tennis anymore. So, yeah. <laughs> good times. Uh, what's it announced? The release date for Monster Hunter Rise, the newest Monster mm. Hunter game. Coming out good. in March. March. Uh, yeah, it's good. What Monster Hunter? You know, a lot of fans, a lot of big fans of Monster Hunter around. Very excited for this. Yep. Very, very cool. There was a demo recently as well. I missed it. It was like a timed mm. demo, but uh, it, yeah, by you know, again, by all accounts, it was very good. It looked great. It looked like Monster Hunter. So I'm sure people are very, very excited for that. Absolutely. I could never get into Monster Hunter for some reason. I don't know why. I think it's a bit too slow for me. But yeah, I think we struggled when we were playing it all together, didn't we? I think it was um it's quite difficult to get into. I think there's a lot to it. And if I think yeah, if you if you just throw yourself in, not really having played it before, I think it's just a bit overwhelming. Yeah, big time. But still a very cool game. Yeah, for sure. Uh it also announced something very cool, the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection remaster. Yeah. In June. In June. Was it coming to Switch? Um, was it coming to Xbox and PS4 as well? Yep. Nice. Look They're difficult games. Um, are you going to go for that, Ethan? Yeah, probably. I love the Ninja Gaiden games back in the day. Fair enough. Very yeah, cool. I like them as well. I always yeah. like the design of them. Like yeah. Because the they, uh, they're made by Koei Tecmo, the same people that make the Dead or Alive games. Yeah, exactly. Very, very cool. So Am I right Ninja... saying that some... Um... Sorry, Finn. Dead or Alive DLC there to make uh, uh, them playable in the game. Did I see that? Um, I don't know, to be honest. I didn't notice it, but maybe. Can't see it on the list, but... Hmm, I could maybe. be talking out my ass there, to be honest. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so it contains Ninja Gaiden Sigma, Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2, and Ninja Gaiden 3. The Sigmas are like the re... Sort of like remakes, re-releases. Yeah. Improved stuff. Uh, so yeah, the best version of all three games, which is very exciting. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also, showed off more No More Heroes 3. If the game still exists. Who know? Who knew? Yeah, and I know. Like Amazing. Years ago, saw nothing, and now finally, you know, it's here again. Uh, big fan of the first two games. Very fun. Very silly. Uh, but yeah, very looking forward to this game. Playing through it yeah, again. I look forward to seeing more of it in about three years' time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> just uh, that's a cool, weird game, full of madness and weird boss fights and <laughs> um, weird mini games, which is great. I love it. Yep. <laughs> Uh, do you want to announce the Outer Wilds coming in summer? Uh, not to be confused with the Outer Worlds, which came out around the same same sort of time. Very confusing. Uh, but yeah, that's that. That's very cool. A lot of fans cool. of that. Reviewed very well. Um, also announced Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighbor, Neighbor Hill, Neighborville Complete Edition, which is the uh, third-person shooter Plants vs. Zombie games, team-based yep. multiplayer online. Very, very popular. Uh, yeah, it's a fun game. Never, never get into it myself, but very popular, I think, with younger people. Like my nephew likes it. I mean, you know, my nephew's nine years old, so I think that pretty yeah. much shows the audience that Plants vs. Zombies attracts. Yeah, not absolutely. a bad thing. Not a bad thing. No, not at all. Um, also, another, another game I'm very excited for: um, Project Triangle Strategy, working title uh, for Square Enix, coming out not out for a while, coming out in 20, 2022. Mm -hmm. It's a long way off, but there is a demo which I played. That's the thing I forgot to mention. Um, which is very, very cool. Very, you know, tactical. It's a Final Fantasy Tactics style game. Yeah. Uh, which is very, very cool. The story's like very story heavy. It looks very cool from the trailer. Like you can make decisions, which all, you know, affects, you know, the entire story and game and which characters you can re recruit to your team. And yeah, a very me game. And I can't wait to play that when it comes out. Cool. It's very, very good. Yeah, it did uh, look interesting. It's not a very me game, but I thought, you know, this is going to be super popular when it does come out. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, also, the, the thing they started off with, the, there's a very cool way to announce it, is um, the new Smash character, um, characters, you could say, uh, Pyra and Mithra from uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, mm -hmm. uh, the main female protagonist. Um, I love the way they announced it. Like, it's basically like an in-game cutscene. The way yeah. it looks like an in-game cutscene. Um, which at first I thought was like, oh, it's going to be DLC for Xenoblade. That's cool. Um, it's very, like, are you ready to join me on my next adventure, Pyra? And she was just like, I think I can do that. I'm going because I'm going to be in Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> yeah, he spins around holding like the invite. It's like, whoa, that's awesome. <laughs> that's a very cool way to announce it. Yeah, I mean, they're with with the Smash announcements now. It's all very elaborate and you know mm -hmm. ma made to be like a big deal. 
Yeah, I love it. It's cool. I mean, it keeps Smash super relevant. You know, it's uh, it's been out for what a couple of years now, two oh, years. Like that, yeah, yeah, two and a half years, and it's still incredibly popular. There's uh, heaps of DLC for it, and way more to come. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. I didn't really enjoy the the accent of the boy character that was talking though, the northern accent that he had. Uh, yeah, so these games are localized in uh, England, obviously, which is why mm. everyone has you know a British accent in these games. Um, but yeah, just a, just a cool, a cool game. It's 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 weird hearing like British voices coming out of like anime characters. <laughs> it's the only like the only game I can think of, or game series I can think of that has like British voices. Um, but yeah, it's cool. I love it. Cool. Good times. And the other big thing, the main big thing I left until, until the end of the show was Splatoon 3 is coming. Yeah. Yeah, another very popular game. Uh, I've seen a lot of Splatoon fans on Twitter very, very excited for this. So that's cool. That's always good, a good thing to see. Yeah, definitely. Because um, the original Splatoon was on the Wii U, wasn't it? And yeah, then yeah. the second one is on Switch. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've only v- played a very little amount of Splatoon 2. Uh, but it's good. Yeah, very good. Sorry, about to sneeze. I'm good to cut off. Uh, but yeah, very, very cool game. I can never get into it personally because I'm not a big you know, multiplayer guy. That's fair. Uh, but it's very unique, very cool idea. You know, got to paint as much of their level as you can. It's not just based on like kills and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love it. it. You know, it's more of the same. Very good. And fans are happy with it. So that's always a good thing. Yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah. Uh, that's about it, really. Um, other than like the Super Mario themed stuff in Animal Crossing, looks very cute. Yep. That's coming soon. Um, and yeah, that's about it, really. And the fact that Breath of the Wild 2 news is coming later on in the year. Yeah, that as well. Which is to be expected. To be expected. Hopefully, we'll get some more Metroid stuff as well. Because I, I, I really so. like, yeah, I would really like uh, Metroid Prime trilogy for over to Twitch. Because mm. it already exists not... on Wii. There's no reason not to. Yeah, I mean, I messaged you the other day and I was like, how have they not released any sort of Metroid on the Switch yet? Yeah. Now would be the time to do it with the 25th anniversary. I hope they don't just like put it off to the side, like Zelda, Zelda, Zelda. Just forget about Metroid, because that suck. It's like Metroid's yeah. like one of the biggest franchises they have, and they're just like they're ignoring it at the minute, which is a shame. Yeah, definitely. Um, so it was, you know, it was a it was a cool direct. Mm. Uh there wasn't much in there um for me personally. I mean, you know, Mario Golf I will definitely get because um that's my shit. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Um, but you know, other than the the Animal Crossing stuff, which is cool because I play that, and um, yeah, so there wasn't really much for me, but you know, there was a bit of something for everybody in there. I thought, yeah, absolutely. I thought it was great. Obviously, Nintendo fans were expecting more, but yeah, sort of. lower your expectations, people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, if and you lower the- them, then you won't be disappointed. Exactly. I went into this expecting nothing, and I was pleasantly surprised. So it's all good. Yeah, there you go. Just yeah. lower your expectations. Yeah, <laughs> expect nothing and get everything. Yeah, right. I mean, people were like, "Oh, yeah, we're going to see Breath of the Wild too. We're going to get a Nintendo Switch Pro and all this sort of stuff." And it's like, why do you think you're going to get these things? Like, what Nintendo give nothing away at all? Yeah, like, they just they just sit around all year twiddling their thumbs, thinking, "I wonder how we can really piss people off." <laughs> um, at the same time as delivering things that people might like. And they yeah. do it perfectly every single time. So congratulations, Nintendo. You're the best. And there's always like quote unquote rumors beforehand saying, oh, the rumor about it's gonna be new, but the world's gonna be out this year. It's gonna be this and that and this. You switch pro is like, no, you're not. Just stop making stuff up. Yeah, Nintendo can't be asked with that stuff. Yeah. It's like the same type of thing as like Silent Hill rumors. There's always Silent Hill rumors I thought about this. Like new ones coming out recently. You know, yeah. starting, starting on the new works coming, you know, coming out this summer. I know it's not. It's never coming. It's dead. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you know, I saw that as well. I was just thinking, yep, okay, that could be cool. But at the same time, what's the likelihood of this? Yeah. If they do, it's going to be, it's going to suck. It's going to be like that. What that one on the Xbox 360 was called, uh, which is just like, they just made it a generic third person game. It's like, yeah, yeah, was it something to do with a room or a door or something? Uh, no, it's only for the room. It was great. It was on PS2. Uh, there's one on 360 and PS3. I can't remember the name of. I think I have it. Uh, I don't have it. <laughs> but yeah, it exists and it sucks. So don't play it. Fair, fair enough. Yeah, cool. <laughs> there's one on the Wii, which is very good, called Shattered Memories. Very, very good. Recommend checking that one out if you haven't played it. Uh, but otherwise, they've all sucked since. 
for pretty much. Yeah, so I mean, there's been a, quite a few rumors surrounding Konami. What can what do you know about it? I mean, what do you or what do you make of it? Um, Konami's going to Konami. Um, I, I hope they want to change their image and you know, get more, they get back into you know the mainstream of the games. Mm-hmm. But for now, it just looks like they're trying to you know make the Jinko machines you know haul out. <laughs> it's uh, buddy, what's his name, Pyramid Head, to every single franchise, put him in everything. Yeah, just completely ruins the character. But you know, it is what it is. They like money yeah. and nothing else. It's all it's even in them. Dead by Daylight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. Hopefully, you know, I would, I would love a new Silent Hill, a good Silent Hill. But again, my expectations are low right now. That's fair. Yeah. I, I saw that they were like wanting to maybe outsource Metal Gear in Castlevania as well to no. uh, other developers to 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 look at. I mean, I'm not really sure how I feel about this, especially with Metal yeah. Gear, but. I had about um, yeah, Blue Point games was the, was the name getting thrown around, which would be awesome. Hey, you know? if Blue Point get hold of the original Metal Gear, uh, Metal Gear, not the the NES one, the Metal Gear <laughs> Solid from the PlayStation, then hey, I would be all for it. I would love that. Big time, yeah, I would love that. I don't ever see it happening. I have to be honest. No, probably not. But again, it would be one of the things that would be absolutely amazing, one, one to dream about, but unlikely to actually happen. Yeah, I can't see it happening. I'm yeah. very surprised. Well, it's Silent Hill. It's we make. Yeah. 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 Just remake the first one. Yeah. Who knows? The best one as well. Yeah. Well, mm, two is probably the best one. But yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but they're all good. Let's face it. All the, like, the best four. Not the one on the 360, though. No, not that one. I would say. Not that bullshit. No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's Nintendo stuff. You also, the other big thing was the Diablo 2 remake, which is coming very soon. Hell yeah! Yes. Um, also, to the uh, Blizzard to support uh, uh, Vicarious Visions. Mm-hmm. So they're going to be helping out with that. And they obviously just remade uh, Crash Bandicoot Trilogy and um, Tony Hawk. Yeah. So that's very cool. Good things coming, hopefully. Don't miss it. Looks great as well. Yeah, looks awesome. Yeah, it looks um, really good. Yeah, very cool. Look forward to playing that uh, on console. It's very cool. Yeah, for sure. It's coming to everything as well, isn't it? Yeah, console, PC, everything. Because I know Diablo 3 is on Switch. I wonder if they'll bring it to Switch. Yeah, I'm sure they will. Probably. I can't see why not. I hope so. That'd be cool. Not very you know, graphically intensive game, is it? I wouldn't say so, no. I mean, Diablo 3 looks looks and plays wonderfully on the Switch. Yeah. Yeah, so I can't so... see why, not, why they wouldn't bring it on. Yeah, fingers crossed. Good stuff. And uh, I think that's pretty much it, gaming-wise. Okay. Well, that was good. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much for uh, providing us with that wonderful gaming news, Finn. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> right. Finn Steele currently leads the Eliminator 2-1. Hell yeah. And it's time for the next round. Hell yeah. Here we go. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, are you both ready? Are you both excited? I am ready. This is becoming yeah. one of my favorite sections on the podcast every week. I, I like <laughs> that, you know, people listening to it send us their answers in as well. Please definitely mm. keep doing that. Yeah. Hashtag GG yeah, Eliminator. Absolutely. There you go. Well, that hashtag. Cool. GG yeah. GG Eliminator. Get it, get it trending. Get it trending. Yeah. yeah. Hashtag yeah. GG Eliminator. Let's do it. Get it trending. Send us <laughs> your answers. Um, but yeah, Steve managed to claw one back last week. Mm. Yeah, dirty tactics though. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to do this. I, I feel quite, I feel quite guilty about it. So that's why I've. Why do you feel so, guilty about it? Uh, well, actually, no, I don't feel guilty about it. But I have, I have, um, I've suggested a slight change in how we do the answers because I don't want to get undone by my own dirty tactics. So there we go. <laughs> okay. So. I think we should probably introduce a time limit as well on the answers. Yes. Okay. So I think from the point of ending the question, you have 10 seconds to give your answer, to, to jot your answer down. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. So are we, are we ready to go? I'm um, ready. Let's do it. All right. Question number one. Oh, before, if you, if you don't know the rules of the eliminator, those listening at home, Finn and Steve both have five lives. They answer a question wrong. One of the lives is gone. 
Mm. Simple mm. as that. Question number yes, one. Simple as that. There we go. We've got the music. We do indeed. I'll take my pen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who was the first NXT champion? Was it A, Adrian Neville? Was it B, Bo Dallas? C, Big E Langston? Or D, Seth Rollins? (laughs) Pens down. Okay. Okay, Steve, your answer is... I immediately wrote Seth Rollins, but now I'm scared. (laughs) Okay, Finn. (laughs) I too wrote wrote Seth Rollins. Seth freaking Rollins. I can (laughs) confirm that the answer, and the correct answer, was indeed D, Seth Rollins. Yeah. Congratulations both. No lives lost. That's I panicked really a bit because I thought it might have been Neville when she mentioned him. Yeah, I, th- I thought, hmm, was it Neville? Ooh. I think it was Neville, wasn't it? Yeah, then uh, I think, uh, no, Bo Dallas and then Neville, I think. Yeah. Why not Big E, Big e, I think. Big E, then Bo Dallas, then Neville. That makes that sense. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Question number two. Who was the first Money in the Bank winner? Was it A, CM Punk, B, Edge, C, The Miz, or D, Baron Corbin? Yeah, this pen would work. That'd be great. No excuses, please. <laughs> this pen doesn't work while I'm typing into Google. What? <laughs> <laughs> Pens down? Oh, uh, yep. Okay, Steve, your answer first, please. B. Edge. Is that right? Okay. Is it Edge? Yeah. No. I've B. gone for Edge. All edge. right. The correct answer is Edge. Congratulations, gentlemen. Yeah. Of course. Got it in on John Cena. He I did indeed. At New Year's Revolution. Mm. Mm-hmm. After the Elimination Chamber match. I remember marking out, actually, for that, because it was really good. Yeah, same. Yeah. Right. It's time for a video game question. Yay. Okay. <laughs> question number three. After its re- original release in Japan, by what name was the Sega Mark III known worldwide? Worldwide? A. The Mega Drive? B, the Game Gear, C, the Master System, or D, the Saturn? Can you repeat the question, please? Really? Yeah. I was concentrating on the answers. After (laughs) its original release in Japan, by what name was the Sega Mark III known worldwide? A Mega Drive, B Game Gear, C Master System, D Saturn. It's one of two for me. Mm. One that makes the most sense, but I also think I've heard this. Yeah. I've gone for one. Pens down. Pens are down. Steve? Saturn. Okay. Finn Steel? Not Perry. Great minds think alike. I've also gone for Saturn. Okay. Well, I can confirm. Uh, the correct answer was C, the Master System. Oh, that was oh, the other one. Oh, really? I knew the Master System was that, and I couldn't make up my mind. Damn. I thought it was because it was like the third one. Yeah, Master System, Mega Drive, Saturn. Well, that makes perfect sense, and I can completely understand why you would have mm. both gone for that. Yeah. To be honest, if I didn't have the answer in front of me, that's the one I would have gone for as well. Yeah. Yeah, the Master System. Mega Mark III. Yeah. Yeah. That was I guess like, that yeah, I guess I like the third. I don't know. Who knows? God knows. Okay. Who knows? Right. Next question. This is an open-ended question. No multiple choice. Okay. Okay. Are we ready? 
How many? Let's go for it. Which console released worldwide was the first to include a built-in modem for online gaming? Mm. I think I know. This means I won't do it. <laughs> it means it'd be wrong. Okay. Pens down. Steve, we'll start with you. Complete guess. I've gone with PS3. Okay. Finn? Uh, I've gone for the Dreamcast. The correct Dreamcast. answer is indeed the Sega Dreamcast. Yay. Sega Dreamcast. I first thought I was going to put PS2. Um, mm. I was like, you have, to, but you have to buy that separately, didn't you? Yeah, until the PS2 Slim came out, and that did have the modem built into it. So all you needed to do was just plug an Ethernet cable in. Yeah, mm. I, I well, I say it was a guess. I went with the logic that you had to buy that adapter thing for the 360. Yeah, and, and, and I, I mean, I never had a PS3, so it was that was yeah. my logic. Never with mind. the Dreamcast, it came with the Windows disc, and you could also plug like your phone line into the back of the Dreamcast. Yes, it, yes. it was fucking dial up then. So it was, <laughs> yeah, God. Yeah, on okay, so Steve, you are the first to lose a life. No, I've lost two. You, no, both of you have lost uh, a life. I've lost two. two. Fin no, Finn's, yeah, yeah. That's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Who won? Oh, sorry. Next question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So intense. The King of the Ring tournament in the year 2000. Yeah. Was it A, Billy Gunn? Was it B, Kurt Angle? Was it C, Ken Shamrock? Or was it D, Bret Hart? Ugh. Have to rush you for an answer here, guys. It's probably not this, but it's okay. an outside outside bet. Pens down. Mm -hmm. Steve. Kurt Angle. Okay, Finn. I went for the for an unlikely one, but I went for it anyway. Billy Gunn. I think he did win one, didn't he? I can confirm that the correct answer. Is so intense. Kurt Angle. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Gunn won the King of the Ring in 1999. Damn, oh, yes. year out. I knew he won something, but I couldn't remember what it was. Yeah. Damn. I knew, I knew Kurt had that unbelievable. He won pretty much everything, but I couldn't. I, I was hedging my bets that he'd also won the King of the Ring. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Happy days. Next question. So, Stephen Finn, you have both lost two lives. Yes, indeed. A lawsuit was filed by Sega against the 2003 game The Simpsons Road Rage for its perceived similarities to which other driving game? That is an open-ended question. Pens down. Steve? Crazy Taxi. Finn? Yeah, 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 yeah. Same thing. Crazy <laughs> taxi. You are both correct. Yeah, it had to be. All right. That's even a good, with my limit, well, even with my limited gaming knowledge, I'd have been worried about it got that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. That is fair enough. Um, okay. Next question. I'm going to need another bit of paper. <laughs> <laughs> or not. <laughs> okay. Beginning in 1995, which video game series developed by Team 17 features opposing teams of Annelids attempting to eliminate each other? Annelids. Annelids. Yep. Not this. I'll eat my headphones. I 
Okay, pens down. Steve, did you get an answer? No, pass. Pass? <laughs> Couldn't even guess. Pass, no. <laughs> I went, it's Team 17, so it's got to be, surely, Worms. It is indeed oh, Worms. Of course it yeah. is. Bloody hell. <laughs> Steve, you've lost a life. Now for that new word. Mm. Oh, it's fun. No, no. New word. Yeah, me too. <laughs> 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 Education right. as well as uh, intense. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So every day's a school day, especially here on the Games and Grats podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next question. Who won the Royal Rumble? In 2000. Yeah, it ended. Was it? No. Oh, okay. Thank you. The Rock. Was it The Big Show? Was it Triple H? Was it The Rock and The Big Show? Pens down. Steve. I've gone with D based on the main event of Mania that year. But okay. I'm probably way off. Here we go. Finn? That makes sense. Otherwise, why would you say it? Um, but I've gone for Triple H, Hunter Hearst, Helmsley, or Steve is correct. Damn. Rock and the Big Show. When the, the I believe the Rock was originally meant to win, but the uh, the finish uh, balls yeah. up and the Rock and the Big Show's feet both hit the floor at the same time. Similar to John Cena and Batista, when uh... yeah, but only with no Vince blowing his quads out, <laughs> <laughs> which is still the, uh, the the greatest. Yeah, so weird. And it was a, uh... and there wasn't Mankind and uh, Triple H in the. Uh, yeah, it was just Mick Foley and Triple H. Yeah, uh, they, uh, they they actually fought at Wrestle. Uh, sorry, at No Way Out in a Hell in a Cell match that same year. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, so the scores on the doors are so far. Finn, how many lives do you have left, my friend? Uh, two. Steve. Two. This is so intense this week. So it's close. We're getting so questions right as well, which is different than last week. Is <laughs> We're getting questions right as well, which is different than last week. Yeah, last week was a pretty poor week for the two of you. Yeah. It was terrible. Next question. Music, please, Maestro. <laughs> Can't have the question without the music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In WrestleMania 2000, the main event was a fatal four-way and the stipulation was there was a man in each corner. Who did the Big Show have in his corner for that match? Was it A, Vince McMahon, B, Stephanie McMahon, C, Linda McMahon, or D, Shane McMahon? Uh, one of two again. Pens down. Steve? I've gone with Shane. Finn? I've gone, also gone with Shane and Mac. It comes hey, you are both correct. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> wow. This is, uh, this is good this week. <laughs> really good. Yeah. I love it. Genuinely running out of space. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find some paper without having to make loads of noise. Don't write on your hand. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. Don't worry about um making loads of noise. Right. Next question. What were the first names of the Basham brothers? Uh, 
No, open ended. I have no idea. <laughs> Pens down. Steve. Complete guess. Little nod to uh, some friends of ours. Sonny, I've gone with John and Dave. (laughs) 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 Got a clue. Finn. I very similar, but Fred and Bob. The correct answer was Doug and Danny. You are both mm. down to one life Ooh. each. Now you said it, it makes sense. <laughs> John and Dave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Could this question be the decider? One life each. Mm. <laughs> Uh... Okay. Next question. Mona Sachs is the femme fatale love interest of which video game character? A. Nathan Drake. B. Max Payne. C. Crash Bandicoot. Or D. I can't think of another video game character. (laughs) (laughs) Kratos, there you go. So not that one then. No, it's not that one though. (laughs) I'm gonna put D. No. Kratos is elimination. Ben's down, Steve. Complete guess on my part, I've gone with B. Which was? Did you say Max Payne? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did say Max Payne. Finn? Uh, I too, he come with Max Bile Payne. No, what happens here? It is indeed Max Payne. You are both <laughs> correct. Yes. Well, I knew it was Nathan Drake or Crash Manigoot. So. <laughs> yeah. I recognize the name. I know it's from something. Bit yeah. of an easy one there, to be honest. Ooh. Right. Would you like a video game or a wrestling question? We're both going to say different things, but video game. Video yeah, game. That's fine. Go for it. I don't have a coin. No, I was going to do the same. I haven't got a coin either. <laughs> okay. Next question. Okay. <laughs> Devastated by sandstorms, which city is the setting for Spec Ops The Line? Ooh, great game. Is it Jeddah? Is it Dubai? Is it Las Vegas? Or is it Cairo? Great game. You are right. So good. Um, Incredibly underrated as well. Yeah, crazy. Spelled that wrong. Okay, pens down. Steve. Flip guess. C, Vegas. I know it's wrong. Finn? I've gone for the first one. It was Ged- Gedda. I spelled wrong, but... Jeddah, in which Gedda. is in Saudi Arabia, home of uh, Saudi mania. <laughs> yeah. The answer, which neither of you got... Damn. ...is Dubai. Oh. I, nearly put, I nearly put B as well. Well, does that mean it's a tie, or do we get like a bonus question? Uh, we're going to have to have a tiebreaker because we can't have a tie. Yeah, okay. Okay. I wasn't prepared for this. It's, it's never gone uh, this deep before. Yeah. Who? Right, okay. Okay, I got one. I got one. Okay. Who was the winner? Of the WrestleMania 17 gimmick battle royal, was it A, Sergeant Slaughter? Was it B, the Iron Sheik? Was it C, Nikolai Volkov? Or was it D, General Adnan? Yeah. 
I know it. Pen, please. Pens down, please. <laughs> Steve? Yeah, yeah. I immediately, before you even said the answers, wrote the Iron Sheik, but I think that could be wrong. Okay. Finn, what did but you I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> uh, I've gone with Sergeant Slaughter or Sergeant S, because I can I don't have time to write it all down. Okay. <laughs> I guess. The answer. Well, the person who got the correct answer and is this week's winner of the Eliminator is. Do we have a drum roll? I can't do one. Okay. The winner with the correct answer of the Iron Sheik. No. Tying the series at 2 2 is Steve. <laughs> Finn Steele, you lose for a second week in a row. Great round this week, though. That means I'd put the effort in. Go. <laughs> <laughs> GG. That was, a, that was a great round this week, guys. Really good really, stuff. Yeah, that was really good. 13, that was 13 like that. questions. Awesome. Yeah. 13 questions. I love it. See, I've got a I've got a WWE quiz book coming uh, <laughs> uh, um, tomorrow. So next week we're uh, yeah we're gonna we're gonna dig even deeper. Awesome. Cool. I love so it. So the series good. is now tied at two apiece. This is uh, lost my lead. This is incredible stuff. Finn, you've gone from, you know, being 2 0 up to drawing 2 2. You've dropped it. I have. No. I have. I've got cocky. Wow. So um, I'm, I'm really enjoying this feature. Yeah. That was good. Yeah, yeah I enjoyed it. Good. good times. All right. Let us know what you got at home, ladies and gentlemen, using the hashtag GG Eliminator. Yeah. And um, yeah, uh, this is this is becoming uh, it's definitely becoming one of my favourite segments on the podcast for sure. Yeah, me too. Really fun. Yeah, good that. Absolutely right. So we're going to move on to uh, the wrestling news for the week, and uh, what we're going to do, we're going to change it up a little bit, and we're going to go with the highs and lows of the week instead of going like in depth with the shows like we would usually do and you know, dissecting it. We're going to talk the highs and the lows and uh, go for that instead. Cool. Yep. Steve, I'm going to hand this one over to you. Okay. So I'll take it we're going to start with Vengeance Day. Yeah. Pay-per-view. Yeah, we'll start um, with Vengeance Day. I thought it was a fantastic show from start to finish. Yeah. Every yep. single Same match was, was superb to the point where I, I'm finding it quite hard to pick my match of the night i don't know about you guys mm. yeah so, i mean i thought, I thought it was a great show all round. Yeah. Mm. yeah full of highs yeah oh, absolutely absolutely yeah. um it's an early contender for pay-per-view of the year and i know it's only february and we've got a long long time to go but if this pay-per-view isn't a front runner then we've we're in for a hell of a year so oh, god yeah Really, really good. Both both Dusty uh, Cup classic matches were, were great. I thought the men's one edged the women's one in terms of quality. Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't disappointed at all with the winner. Um, I'd have been happy with either, as we said on the on the predictions. So I thought that was yeah. really, really, really good match. I think um, our predictions for the most part were horrible as well. Um, um, I I'll get every prediction right. To... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, I didn't. Yeah, I, mine were awful. Yeah, so you, yeah, you, you went for EO, didn't you? And uh, was he went for for Tony Storm? Tony Storm yeah, yeah. about MSK, um, and the others. I think you mostly had the same. Was yeah, it? I think yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah so, so, like the first time in Games Wrapped history that someone's got every single one right. Yeah, <laughs> I think it could be. You know, good stuff. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Yeah. really, really great show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top show. Um, I, I don't think there's, there's for me, there's not many low points. I think there's a, a couple of unfortunate bits from what I've been reading. The women's match went a bit shorter than was anticipated, but still mm. a great show. 
really, really unfortunate that as Tony Storm was clearing the announce table, it just collapsed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Apparently that was Vic Joseph's fault. Apparently he grazed it as he stood up and it just collapsed. <laughs> so that, that would have been, which is really unfortunate. And, and you know, credit to credit to those involved in the match for, for just getting on with it and thinking, okay, we can't do that spot. Let's go and do what we need to do to, to finish this match off. Because we've seen it before in wrestling where certain spots don't happen for things like that. Um, my immediate thought is the Elimination Chamber where, was it Mark Henry's pod? Oh, yeah. Broke before it should have. And the <laughs> whole match then just became a little bit of a mess. So credit yeah. to those, you know, those three involved in that match for, for cracking on. The main event was fantastic. It felt like three matches in one. Mm. You imagine, it, it was quite a slow start, slow burner, but it's it's kind of what you what you would expect from these two, you know, very British style wrestling, obviously. Yeah. And um, yeah, the big the big surprise. Well, not surprise. Well, yeah, it is a surprise. The big thing that happened was obviously at the at the very end. Classic NXT. Okay turn at the end of the pay-per-view mm. bloody adam cole bloody adam cole bloody adam cole breaking <laughs> up pretty much breaking up the undisputed era so he super yeah kicks. i really bought an undisputed era t-shirt as well <laughs> <Have you>? yeah <laughs> they ruined yeah, it so yeah they ruined it i, I don't know <laughs> they, they they might still exist i mean it, it seems that roddy strong is still on Adam Cole's side, or I'm not really yeah, sure he's... how it's going to work going forward. Obviously, Bobby Fish is out injured at the minute, so I'm not really sure what the future is for Undisputed Era. But not I only think, did I, he... think, I think Adam Cole breaks out on his own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but Strong's like in, in kind of in between. It's like uh, Adam Cole, but then Kyle O'Reilly. Um, yeah. yeah, it's good. It's a cool moment. It's unexpected. Um, Came out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I mean, this Turning is clearly going to lead Kyle to. Right yeah, I mean, this is clearly going to lead to um, Adam Cole versus Kyle O'Reilly, which is going to be great. I know they had that same match for the Ring of Honor Championship at Wrestle Kingdom a few years ago. So um, I think yeah. that's going to be really great. And I, I say it all the time, but that's probably Adam Cole's then stepping stone to the main roster because I do think mm. he has to go there at some point. He's yeah. too yes. big of a star to not. Yeah, there's there's a lot of potential for him to move up to SmackDown. Uh, I think that there's, if you look at the SmackDown roster, I mean, yeah. we'll come we'll come on to it later. But the main event of this week, SmackDown, I'd mm. I'd be happy to see Adam Cole against any one of those guys that were in that main event of this week, SmackDown. I'll talk a bit more about yeah. that. So, yeah, interesting to see where this goes. I'm 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 really looking forward. To uh, a Kyle O'Reilly, Kyle O'Reilly, easy for me to say. Uh, singles, <laughs> I think it'd be great. Mm, yep. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I mean, he's proved in those matches that he had with Finn Balor that you know he can one hundred percent hold his own mm. in a yeah, singles definitely. match. You know, and you know, in the aforementioned Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly match at Wrestle Kingdom, you know, that was great. And Kyle O'Reilly has been a singles champion himself, yeah. so yeah. Um, there's no there's no doubt in Kyle O'Reilly's abilities. He's got it all. For sure. He can wrestle tag. He can wrestle single. It's uh, he can wrestle multi man. There's there's no end to the the talents of Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah, oh, definitely, Maybe. absolutely. Uh, one match that I haven't touched on yet, and and for some people it was the the match of the night. I've seen a few people that aren't happy with the with the result of it. I'm not disappointed with it either way. It was Gargano versus Kushida? I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was yeah. a great great match. Yeah, I mean, you, you put two special athletes in the ring mm. together, you're going to get magic. You know, there's no mm. there's no doubt about it. And I thought this was just a brilliant match. Me personally, I was rooting for Kushida. Same. But I do think he'll win it eventually, and he will win it from Gargano. But, um, you know, it just keeps the feud going for a little bit longer. And I haven't really got a problem with that because, you know, it's bringing out the best in both of them. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Okay. I think there's a, there's a lot of people think that it's heading for Gargano versus Dexter Loomis. I, I don't see that myself. I think Dexter Loomis has got his issues with Austin Theory. That's going to come to a match at some point first. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's Bronson got... Reed, Bronson Reed, I think, is uh, as it came about on this week's NXT, that 
he sees himself in that title picture still as well. So yeah, hey, the North American Championship, it's it's uh, definitely got future future in it. Absolutely. Oh, God, one hundred percent. I mean, for me, mm. the logical the logical step would be Kushida. If you're not yeah. going to put, although to be honest, I my, my personal opinion is that Kushida could win the 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 NXT title. Yeah. Yeah, I can um, absolutely yeah, he, see that. that. And then that that does leave the North American title scene open for the likes of Bronson Reed and, and Dexter Loomis. Because the one thing I would hate is for Kushida to win it and then for Bronson Reed to just sort of, you know, take it straight from him. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I wouldn't want that. I'd want him to have a good run with the North American Championship. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I, I personally would prefer Kushida to go for the main title. But... Either that or go to the main roster. Because if there's, yeah. you know, if he doesn't win the North American title and he's not going to go for the NXT title, there's really no point in him being in NXT. He may as well go up to SmackDown or, you know, SmackDown would be better for him, but I would say the same for anybody. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's my opinion on that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Also, also uh, oh, go on, Vin, sorry. I was going to say that's uh, Lumis kidnapped. Uh, Austin Theory. And the other thing that I forgot to mention, just remembered it then, um, was we saw the introduction of Eli, LA Knight. Yes. Uh, formerly Eli Drake. Now, yeah, cool. I'm, a, I'm a big, big fan of Eli Drake. Uh, mm, the yes. guy is one of the best talkers in the mm. entire industry and his promo... Um, the promo that he cut on the pre-show oh, it was brilliant. Was, was great. And mm, I yeah. don't mind the name change. You know, he has no. been attached to NWA and he has been attached to Impact, who, of course, you know, um, are both associated in some way with AEW now. So I can understand the name change. Um, yes. And he can still do the, because he used to be like Eli Drake, and he can still do that with LA Knight. So yeah, there's, there's no real change to the character it's just the name and the name I'm absolutely fine with. Um, yeah. He's, he's great. And he's going to be great in NXT. I can't wait to, to see what they do with him there. I mean, yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ, that roster is stacked. I mean, how yeah. many times that we, you know, we've been able to say that about NXT so many times over the years, but you know, they've signed, you know, Ty of Valkyrie, mm. you know, um, you know, former knockouts champion and real life wife of John Morrison. And she's going to go to NXT, cool. um, you know, and the, you know, they've signed Eli Drake and he's in NXT and it's, it's going to be, um, it, you know, it's so excited. I love NXT. There's, so there's good. been a lot of signings this last couple of weeks, which suggests to me that there's going to be a bit of a move around. We usually get a few releases in and around WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, and I think we're going to start to see a few people moving up to the main roster or across to the main roster, a few people making their debuts in NXT. So it's exciting times all around. I'm all, I'm all for it. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. So what would you guys grade Vengeance Day? A Give plus. school grade. Yeah, A plus, A star. Yeah, A yeah. plus, whatever the highest one is. Yes. Uh, the, the bar has been set for oh, absolutely. use for the rest of the year. What I love for about WWE, the takeover yeah, shows, definitely, definitely, yeah. I mean, what I love about the 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 takeover shows is they they keep the matches to a a, a minimum amount. So five is a perfect amount of matches to have on a card. Yeah, yeah. And all five of them were given enough time to tell the story that they needed to tell, and yeah. the whole thing was just executed brilliantly. So it was a great show, a really, really great show. Tremendous stuff from NXT. Brilliant. Yeah. Big time. I know I've not touched on it much, but the the Raquel Gonzalez and um Dakota Kai oh, yeah. winning absolutely the right the right result for me. Yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Definitely the right call. Um they're just more of an established team than Shotzi and Ember are. Yeah. I've got no problem with Shotzi and Ember as a team. But no. I just think, you know, those two were the were the logical winners. Of the tournament, yes. yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah, absolutely, brilliant. So, from an A plus show down to a ungraded show, really. Um, <laughs> I don't. Uh, Raw was mainly it was quite forgettable for me this week. Uh, when I've I've put There's some notes together. Remember recently? <laughs> as the wow, wow, this is very true. Um, 
mainly forgetful. Just, just I haven't got many notes here at all. You know, highs and lows. You know, it's just a Blair sort of show. Yeah. Um, the Miz has removed himself from the EC uh, from the EC from the elimination. It's because I've got it as EC. That is marky behaviour. If there's so, ever been marky behaviour, it's because I shorthanded it in my notes. <laughs> start again. So the Miz has removed himself from the elimination chamber match. Presumably because someone backstage has realised, hang on, we've got the Money in the Bank briefcase holder in a title match. That doesn't quite make sense. Yeah. So he removed himself from that. He wanted Morrison to take his place. The young, uh, young up-and-comer, as he said, and uh, he wanted yeah. Morrison in there. <laughs> Kofi and Xavier Woods pointed out that Kofi is a former champion. Miz pointed out that Morrison is a former champion. He was the ECW yeah. champion, yeah. which yes, I thought was, was quite kind of. funny. I thought that was quite funny. Um, they had a match to determine uh, which one was going to go. So if the Miz won, then Morrison took his place. Yeah. Kofi, absolutely no problem with that at all. Yeah. No, no, that's fine. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's, he's, he's not going to win the Elimination Chamber at all. No. Um, no. Um, so no I he, he won't win it, but... My prediction... Um, Kofi's underrated ring gets attacked by Retribution and uh, Ali takes his place, went into the elimination chamber, locks himself in, and uh, I love he takes place. yeah, that's a great shout. And obviously, that great sort shout. of then, um, still plays into the story from a couple of years ago when Ali uh was out injured and Kofi took his spot, yeah, yeah. that's my thought. Just, that's my just, just a really good shout, that is, Finn. <laughs> Thank you. The one problem with that, Finn, is you're relying on WWE writers to have continuity from two years ago. So That's true. That's a good point. You know, they have been playing the... into that story, though, haven't they? They have. Yeah. They have, to be fair to him. They have. Yeah, he's been mentioning it. Uh, Ali's been mentioning it. Uh, Bad Bunny is the 24-7 champion. That's okay. the thing. Yeah. Fine. Okay. But the one thing I will say about that, right, and obviously you know, I saw idiots on the internet um, basically comparing it to David Arquette winning the WCW Championship. No. It is no, absolutely no, on, not the same. <laughs> not and good to, those, to those people, Finn, here's the time to play that clip. Yeah, oh, yeah. To those people, I would say... Shut up, you big fucking asshole. <laughs> yes, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's, a, that's a ridiculous comparison. You, we don't need to go into it. Look at the the history and the lineage of that title that David Arquette won versus yeah. the twenty four seven. Jesus Christ, I can't yeah, believe people have made that comparison. Yeah, the twenty four seven title is a joke championship at this point. But well, it is. What yeah. I will say is that look at the delight on Bad Bunny's face when he wins oh, that championship. Sure. Yeah, the, 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 the WWE fan inside him was just absolutely elated. <laughs> yeah, and. I, I love that. I love to see that. I think, you know, you know, I, I when I saw it and I saw the look on his face, I was happy for him. Oh yeah. I mean I I I haven't put it down as a as a low point. I think, you know, fair to him. And look, if someone came to you and said, Do you want to win the twenty four seven title on Raw one week? I'd say, Yes, absolutely I do. Yeah. As a <laughs> fan, that, that must be unbelievable, even though it is a bit of a joke title. So I'd be like, um, I don't want to win with a roll up. I want to win by doing a tornado DDT off of one of the <laughs> backstage crates and <laughs> just hook the leg for the win, if that's okay. Yeah. And they'd be like, no, you'll win it with a fucking roll up. And that's the end of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you want to I skipped over it? I was skipping through all as I normally do. Uh, so I mm -hmm. missed it. I saw it off on Twitter afterwards. I was just like, it's all right. Fine. Sure. Well, um, he, was on, yeah. he was on Saturday Night Live, Bad Bunny, and they you know, put something on social media about him being the 24-7 champion. Oh, right. <laughs> so, yeah. that's, you know, that the reach that, you know, he's going to help, what well, the audience that um, he's going to help WWE reach outside of yes. wrestling is, is, a, is a very big one. So, um, this, this is very smart business on the part of WWE. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Good I point. agree. A uh, bit of a low point for me. Alexa's now into satanic stuff, trying to get yeah. the fiend to come back. Not really for me. That I, um, I know that this is going to go on and on until Mania. 
but it, I found it quite refreshing last week when we didn't have any of the spooky shit. Uh, it was quite refreshing. So I don't want to see it every week now until Mania. Space it out a bit. But we probably are going to get it every week. It wasn't really for me. Uh, we had it again later on in the night when Randy Orton was part of the gauntlet match. All of the screens of the Thunderdome turned to Alexa's face and he got counted out. So that was a thing. Um we we this obviously leading to Bray versus Randy Orton at WrestleMania. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But like I say, I, do we need do we need the spooky stuff every week now? Probably not. No, probably not. No. But um no. just to just to, just to stop you in your tracks there, I've had I've had a little delivery here. Oh, oh yeah. Um, yeah, so I'll show you this. This is a uh, WWE Elite uh, British Bulldog. Very nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Complete with dog as well. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Complete with dog. Cool. Nice dog. Yeah. There you go. Very nice. Good times. Yeah, for sure. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Absolutely fine. Um, now, Lacey Evans is apparently pregnant. Mm. So yeah. this is also kayfabe and apparently in real life as well. Yeah. Um, interesting thing on WWE.com, one of their matches on there is Asuka versus Lacey Evans. It's like, yeah, so uh, it's, it's still advertised, which I've, yeah, I, I find that quite interesting because clearly uh, she wasn't looking to take any bumps on Raw every time. She got tagged in, Lacey backed away, and then when eventually she did get tagged in because I think she was distracted and she got tagged in by Peyton Royce, she then backed away, and then that's when she announced that she was pregnant. But apparently this is because she is actually pregnant in real life as well and obviously don't want to be taking any bumps. Uh, I did laugh when Ric Flair started strutting down, <laughs> down the ramp because uh, yeah. clearly he thinks he's the father, which... Des O'Connor of professional wrestling. <laughs> Space Mountain is still very much in full swing. <laughs> yeah, not great, not great. So, I mean, it's 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 great news for it's great news for Lacey in real life. You know, congratulations and all that. Yeah, congrats. But now is this whole storyline is in real life. Well, it's not. It's, well, I don't know if it's been confirmed by her, but it's also not being denied by her as well. So yeah. who knows? Who knows? I could be it's sat here the, it talking the, Wasn't it the Observer or Fightful or someone reputable that did report that she is pregnant? Yeah, it was. It, was, it might have been like PW Insider or someone like that, and they're, they're yeah. pretty good. Um, so hey, Either that, I'm just taking Rick Fire's word for it. <laughs> yeah, the believe hmm. Rick. Yeah, possibly. So the whole storyline looks to be sort of out the window. But as you say, Finn, the, the match against Oscar is still advertised for Sunday, but I can't see that happening. No. If she's not pregnant and it is all a work, then, you know, there could be a case of uh, Lacey pretending she's pregnant, um, mm. comes to the ring to, uh, to forfeit the match, Yeah, uh, nails Oscar with a woman's rights, one, two, three, it's over, and they're not not pregnant, it's an all a sort of charade all along. Um, so if it's not Lacey Evans, Asuka, who do you reckon will take that place? Don't Charlotte. Take Charlotte. No, <laughs> Peyton Royce, it's it got to be Peyton Royce. Peyton Royce. Oh. oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but, you know, what I would imagine was supposed to be the, the thing here was Lacey winning the championship from Charlotte for, for them then to go on to WrestleMania and wrestle each other. Hmm. Mm. That, that that's what I was thinking it was going to be. I mean, I don't know if that's, I, I don't know. Yeah, who knows? But yeah, Peyton Royce makes sense. Good point. Yeah, yeah, she'll lose. Though. Yeah. That's the that's the yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Sure. Lacey won. Mm. Yeah, who knows? We should, you know, it's all up in the air. We actually, you know, it's not confirmed that Lacey Evans is actually pregnant. Yeah, no idea. Could be anything. Another kid that Ric Flair's got to pay for. <laughs> yeah. He's got to, yeah. fucking um, sign up. He's got to get another Legends contract signed, I reckon. Uh, <laughs> uh. Yeah. So, finished off Raw with a gauntlet match. Not overly entertaining. Uh, can't really remember a lot of it other than other than 
Seamus won, which means that he is he will be the last person out of his pod in the elimination chamber, giving him that advantage. Oh, yeah. And that is it. That was it for Raw. So not fantastic. Um, Pretty drawn. Yeah, out. one thing I thought was a bit weird was uh, Braun Strowman went up to um, you know yes. wanted his place in, in his in his chamber. He says, "Oh, you can't do it because he wants ex WWE champions, not Universal champions." It's, it's yes. just like you just let Gabe Morton's chance, and he's a former EGW champion. So how does the Universal start? <laughs> <not count? laughs> the EGW one does. That's, That's a fair point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, weird. Yeah, ECW champion clearly uh, further up the ranks than the Universal champion. <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> I think Morrison had both versions of the belt. I can't remember because they, they, at one point they were using the original ECW championship and yeah. then they did a WWE fancy version that didn't fit in with the spirit of ECW at all. No. Mm. But yeah, I think he meant both actually, yeah. Unless right. they sort of changed it whilst he was the champion. Mm, maybe. Because Matt Hardy had that championship as well. Yeah. Wasn't Bobby Lashley the first WWE ECW champion? Probably. Just stupid. <laughs> this is like the least, the least uh, AECW wrestler you could possibly have. Yeah, <laughs> he's, not the, he's like the most <laughs> WWE wrestler of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah. Or ECW. Just better. Yeah. <laughs> so that was Raw. Um, quickly moving on to, I'll go on to NXT next, obviously. Um, the first NXT since Sunday's pay-per-view. Action-packed. Uh, some, some good stuff in there. Uh, mm. O'Reilly calls out um, Adam Cole. Um, Roddy Strong and, and Balor come out and they're all attacked by Pete Dunne. And that obviously that then leads to a six-man tag later on in the night. Absolutely yep. fine with that. Uh, yep. Interestingly, es- Escobar is told that if he can't defend his title next week, then he's going to be stripped of it. And I'm wondering whether, because yeah. he did his cut a promo that looked like he was on his phone. So whether he's been unable to make it to um, to where the show takes place or whether he's self-isolating due to COVID, I don't really know. Um, isn't, it the, isn't it if he doesn't turn up for his matches against Karrion Cross, not... It's not for the championship. Yes, sorry, yes, yeah, it is, yeah. But he, but, but I'm pretty sure Regal said he'll be stripped of the title. Yeah, he would be stripped of the title, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's not a title match, my my bad. Um, yeah, and we had uh, The Way versus uh, Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon. Austin Theory is rescued from uh, from a white van. Presumably like Dexter Loomis kept him. That was absolutely fine. It's quite funny yeah. that uh, The Way actually lost the match, I think because they were... Uh, there was distraction and they lost the match, but then yeah. they were celebrating at the end because Austin Theory had been been found and he was just stood there in his boxes. <laughs> That's absolutely <laughs> fine. They were, they I like to. I've loved the. I love the comedic timing of the way. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Gar- Gargano's really. He's really good at that, isn't he? He's. he's yeah, yeah, really good. Down. And I've, I love the missing posters and stuff like that. They could have dragged it out for a bit longer, to be honest. I think they could have dragged it out over the next couple of weeks. And, yeah. You know, had them sort yeah. of. You know. Still looking for Austin Theory, as you know. Instead, they, you know, um, I, I felt it was maybe a little rushed because you know it was only kidnapped on yes. Sunday. Now they've got him back, and you know they had all the missing posters and stuff. And with that, they could have kept it going for just a little bit longer. But uh, you know, I, I'm enjoying it. I think it's funny. I, I, I've really enjoyed mm. Gargano, and I think Austin Theory has played the goofy sidekick really well. Yeah, yeah. yeah so absolutely. yeah, it's it's been it's been good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, we saw Jai Lee again. Um, she she's comes to the top of the ramp here during a during a tag match, women's tag match. Still not quite sure what's going on there with that. She's obviously either way, it kicks off. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what what happens with that. Um, MSK come out to celebrate, and they cut a cut a promo, obviously calling out Birch and, and Larkin. That match is going to happen, I think, in two weeks' time. Mm-hmm. That's that match is going to happen, same as Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez versus Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. Now, interestingly, obviously that that was announced on the Wednesday. Jumping ahead a bit yeah. on SmackDown last night, it was announced that they would be defending the tag titles against Bianca Bella and Sasha Banks this Sunday at Elimination Chamber. So, yeah, strange booking. Um, I don't think. I think 
I mean, you know, there, there's always that su- card subject to change thing, but of course, yeah. I I think it's more of a case of this is to help set up Sasha versus um, Belair, but I don't. Not yep. that I think it needs it because I think the you know the fact that Bianca Belair won the Royal Rumble and wants to wrestle the best speaks for itself. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it is what it is. It's WWE. But if it if it does happen to be Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez versus Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks, how much of a, you know, a coup would that be for Kai and Gonzalez to beat, yeah. beat the two to of them, them for the tag titles yeah. leading, you know, in the helping to build up for Banks versus Belair? Yeah, absolutely. And it fits in with that whole thing that we were talking about, or I was at least talking about where it didn't, quite feel right that it was going to be two heel teams against each other. Yeah. So it does make you wonder yeah. whether there is going to be a change uh, in the next couple of weeks with that title. So we'll wait and mm-hmm. save it on yeah. that one. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, go um, back to MSK, I would love for them to win the titles. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. yeah. With, with uh, I've not really enjoyed I, I, I like that Birch and Larkin won it, but they haven't really mm. kicked on from that. And no. they, they've not really done a lot as the champions. Um, no, they the, is, they've been far too involved with obviously this whole um, Pete Dunne Finn Balor stuff, haven't they? Yeah, I think the also the you know I know McAfee appeared via um, satellite this week or whatever, but um, I think the you know with him not being there to be the mouthpiece for them, I don't think it works yeah. uh, quite as well because all you've got is Danny Birch going lads, lads, all right, lads, <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. He reminds yeah. me of a certain Cockney, so he may as well be saying. Finn, come on. Hmm? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, this one. Shut up, you big <laughs> fucking asshole. No, not that no, one. not that one. <laughs> oh, the, the, I was only half paying attention. Yeah, <laughs> this one. Hey, oh. Get to attend the high school, bloke. So I was reading like yeah. the result. Yeah. <laughs> every week and say that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, so it's good um, you were paying attention as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah finished off like I said with a, with a six man tag, decent match. Uh, broke down a little bit. Balor ends up Pele kicking uh, Roddy Strong by mistake. I think he thinks it was probably Pete Dunn or someone. Uh, yeah. The the heel team win. Dunn picks up the uh, the pin there at the end, and then Adam Cole comes out, gives Balor a quick kick to the head, suplexes uh, O'Reilly onto the steps. Well, I think he took more of it himself than uh, than O'Reilly did. It looked pretty painful. Yeah, okay. um, some some quite disturbing rumours that thankfully have been quashed since that Kyle O'Reilly suffered a, a seizure ringside after that move. But I think those rumours have been squashed and. Uh, there's been no mention of a seizure at all. That the fact that he was carried out on a stretcher is purely storyline. So that's that's yeah. good. That's good. So they were yeah. quite quite worrying things to hear the the next. Yeah, day. he's uh, he's diabetic, and I think um, mm. the the internet put two and two, two together two. made six hundred and eighty three. And they usually do. Yeah, it just wasn't. Um, it just wasn't the case. It was all part of the the storyline you know things do happen that bear in mind that there are some fans in there as well for nxt so yeah. people are taking photographs and what and whatnot so yeah. um they still basically have to play the storyline until the show is over and people are, are filtering out so um no seizure for kyle o'reilly he is fine it's just played into the storyline yeah yes and interestingly it was uh pete dunn pinning finn balor uh, to win that match that looks like that's going to be another match in the future Good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Want to see it? Definitely. Absolutely. But yeah, that was NXT. Good show. You know, mm. nothing, nothing spectacular, but pretty good. Um, yeah. AEW, absolutely fine this week. I have watched the right one. Um, <laughs> th- th- this was really, this was really action packed. Actually, there was there was a hell of a lot of lot going on. Quite a lot of matches. Um, yeah. Adam Page and uh, Matt Hardy had a had a tag match, which was great. I really really like Adam Page. I think he's fantastic. Um, yeah, it's good. There's a whole thing going on there with with contracts. That I'm a little bit confused about and money, which I haven't. Maybe it's because I've missed a couple of episodes recently. That's I've got a bit confused there with stuff. Matt Hardy got uh, Page drunk and made him sign a bit of paper, but I'm not yeah. sure um, what this is going to lead to. I'm assuming no. that 
page isn't tied down to a big money Matt contract. And there's a little mm-hmm. bit of sort of uh, shenanigans going on in there that will yeah. lead to page versus Matt Hardy, but I'm not, um, yeah, I, I'm enjoying it. Seeing I'm, I'm enjoying seeing it played out. I wish Matt Hardy would find a character and stick with it. Stick though. with it. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I really struggled to get behind Matt Hardy at the minute. I mean, when he came into AEW it was, uh, you know, broken Matt Hardy and that was great. And, you know, you thought you were going to sort of get, the full version that we were due to get, you know, in mm. WWE never really sort of came to fruition properly. Um, but then they saw, I think because no fans and all that sort of stuff, they, they put us, they put a hold on it. Uh, but I'm, you know, they, they've gone through sort of having normal Matt Hardy and then he's teamed up with private party and he's become big money Matt again. And obviously they've been back and forth on impact and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I'm struggling to get behind it, but you know, I like this little storyline with him and page. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I know what you mean. It's he, he does all the things that all the other gimmicks do. So he does the version one thing, and then he does the delete thing as well. And so it's a bit all over the place. I, I know exactly what you mean there with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think for me, actually, the, the the biggest highlight of AEW this week was the women's match. Now, AEW's women's uh, scene has, has has been what's the word? It's not, it's not, doesn't get stop given, uh, yeah, it's been stop start and it doesn't get a lot of credit. It gets criticized. It's the word I was looking for quite a lot. Uh, but I thought this was a fantastic match against, uh, it was Deeb versus Riho. The re- she returned. Uh, this was a tournament match. It was a slow start, but it really, really picked up and it was given time. And, and in the end, it was really, I, I thought it was a really fantastic match. It was a great, great women's match. Uh, Riho won, so she progresses. Uh, but that was that was my highlight for AEW this week. Uh, I thought it was that was, it was, a lot was really good to see. Yeah, I think it was a lot of people's highlights. A lot of people, mm. you know, had a lot of praise for the match. Um, yeah. Riho apparently put in a one, you know, probably her best performance in AEW. Yeah, it was really and good. Serena Deeb was actually injured as well. So mm. for her to put on a match of the caliber that they did, yeah. um, you know, really shows to you know how hard the two of them worked for it, and that's. It's really great to see this women's tournament yes. um, getting so much mm. um, attention. Yes. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Good. Absolutely. Um, I hope Britt Baker wins it. Hope who? Sorry. Britt Baker. Oh yeah. Yeah. Same. Same. Um, we saw Sting take his first bump in a wrestling ring for about six years. Got power bombed yeah. by uh, Brian Cage. Took it like a oh. champ, as you would expect. Oh, it's cultured. Oh, yeah. He is, he is though, isn't he? He is cultured. Yeah, he is, yeah. I mean, his mic work's still fantastic. There are other, oh, other other wrestlers around his age that when you, they get given a mic now, you just, it's it's not great. But he's fantastic. He still, still doesn't miss, miss the mark, does he? Um, great, great week for the old timers. Ric Flair knocking up Lacey Evans, Sting taking a powerbomb like a champ. Yeah, it's a good time. JR calling Kenny Omega the WWE <laughs> champion. Well, I was yeah. just yeah, well, so yeah. I was uh, I was I was just going to come on to that. Someone who perhaps isn't so cultured these days. Poor old, poor old Jim Ross um, mm. said that Kenny Omega was the WWE champion, as you just said there. <laughs> so, so I think the the actual line was our cameras caught up with Kenny Omega, the WWE champion. Now, interestingly. I watch AEW on a Saturday after it's been recorded on a Friday night when it's on uh, ITV4. Mm-hmm. They blanked that bit out. Oh. <laughs> so it said, our camera's caught up with Kenny Omega, the champion. Oh, right. <laughs> they, they completely dropped, they dropped it out. So, um, yeah. Makes sense. And, and you know what? Fair play, fair play to Jim Ross. He acknowledged it on Twitter. Um, you know, we all make mistakes. We all say, I mean... I've had a few tripped up words this afternoon. So it happens. It happens yeah. a lot with JR. He, he, he likes to, I mean, he mentioned 619 again uh, earlier on in the show. Um, so it, it's probably hard for him. He's, he's been WWE for so long. Um, That's it. But, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know. I think Drew's been uh, on Twitter as well. Just like a picture of him just being like, come on. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, me personally, I think it's time for JR to retire. I really do. I think it's time for him to sort of call it a day and, uh, 
you know, maybe stick to just doing the interview stuff because that he's really good at. Like, I love the the sit down, like one to one interviews. I think he's yeah. he's fantastic at those. That mm. you know, and he always has been, and you know, he yeah. was a great commentator, but he he just isn't now. I mean, he's still got the you know the great voice, but you know, I would rather just see a, a two man booth of Excalibur and Tony Schiavone because Tony Schiavone is still great, and yeah. the passion in Tony Schiavone's voice every single show is just like, you, you know, you can almost feel how excited he is. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I love that they brought Tony Schiavone back to. Uh, to to be part of the AEW announced team, so I mean you could have a you know you could have Excalibur as the play by play because obviously he's incredibly knowledgeable um, and fits very much in with modern wrestling and what it what it's about. And yeah. Tony Schiavone can be the old school color commentator alongside him, and I think that'd be just fine. You don't need a three man yeah. booth. No show needs a three man booth. No, no. no. No, there's, there's, there's still a place for JR, I guess. Like you say, interviews, you know, they're giving advice to the to the younger commentators and stuff. So, but yeah, bless him. So Kenny Omega, WWE champion. Congratulations. congratulations. Yeah, round of applause for Kenny Omega, please. I got this on. It's hard to up. Give me that. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Kenny. Well done. Well done, Kenny. AEW. <laughs> Uh, is he the AAA champion as well? So AEW, AAA, and uh, WWE. Congratulations, Kenny. Grand slam. What a guy. What a guy. <laughs> um, yeah, a few other things of note. Um, Santana and Ortiz versus the Young Bucks. The Bucks win in a circle, come down, attack. Uh, the Good Brothers then come out, and the inner circle then disappear. One bit that really, really, really made me laugh, made me laugh was MJF calling the Young Bucks dad an old sack of crap. Um, <laughs> fantastic! So he doesn't mingle it, his oh, words. It, well, yeah. earlier on in the night, there was a there was a backstage bit with the inner circle and MJF and Jericho. To be fair, were both brilliant. Still, you know, absolutely brilliant on the mic. But yeah, an old sack of crap <laughs> <laughs> to the young butt's dad. And you know what? You didn't need to be told that it was the young butt's dad. It was just so obvious. Um, but anyway. Quick note on uh, the inner circle. Uh, I don't know if you saw mm. the stories about Sammy Guevara this week. Yeah, um, remind me. I have seen. So he was. Oh, he was heat or something. Yeah. So last week he was due. So last week he sort of um, took himself out of the inner circle and said he needed a bit of time away. The mm-hmm. idea was for him to turn up on Impact this week. Oh. Yeah, but uh, Sammy didn't like what was pitched for him in Impact. Uh, and he pitched to them for him to win the X Division Championship and then take it to AEW. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, basically, Impact wasn't happy with and wasn't having that, which led to um, basically Sammy Guevara turning up to the Impact tapings, being told he wasn't needed, and basically being told to go home. Um, and because of him sort of pitching something different and not wanting to do what was asked of him, um, there was allegedly a little bit of heat on him from Impact and AEW side of things. Yeah, did you see that funny, funny uh, video he put out? I did, yeah. Yeah, been out in the cold with an instant t shirt. He said, Why are you wearing a t shirt? Well, the internet told me I got so much heat, I didn't think I needed one. <laughs> <laughs> I like Sammy Guevara. To be honest, I think him winning the X Division Championship would have been cool, but, um, you know, it's yep. it obviously it has to work with everyone's plans. Yes. You know, TJP yeah. is the current X Division champion. I would assume he wouldn't exactly be a massive fan of dropping it to somebody who doesn't actually work for the company as TJP's on a good roll at the minute. So, you know, just just do what you're told to do. You're paid to do mm-hmm. a job. Do the job, regardless of whether you like it or not. I'm sure Santino Morella didn't want to win the uh, Women's Battle Royal all this time ago. And yet, uh, you know, he still did. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, and then the main event was Kingston, Butcher and the Blade versus Mox, Archer and Phoenix. Uh, Mox and the lads won. Uh, the Good Brothers come down and attack Mox. Kenny comes out um, and Finn's gone. <laughs> Not sure what's happened there. Yeah, Finn's gone. He'll be back, I'm sure. It's fine. He'll be we'll, back. We'll carry on. Carry on. We'll carry on. We'll carry on. Um, so yeah, uh, and Kenny comes out and uh, 
he said that he wants a rematch against Mox and it's going to be yeah. an exploding barbed wire death match. Yeah, I mean, that sounds certainly very interesting. Mm. Um, I'm all for it. Yeah, you think it'll be pre-taped? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe. Welcome back, Finn. Thank you. Internet, internet drops. Thanks, Virgin. Okay. Good old, uh, <laughs> good, good old live recording. Yeah, we we carried on. We we carried on like pros, Finn. Cool, cool. There'll be a bit of a cut in the audio version, but that's fine. I talked it out. That doesn't need to be. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. to be me. That to be silence for like a minute. <laughs> yeah, we were talking still. Yeah, but in in the audacity, I'm recording it from my end. So oh, from my course, end. Yeah. Fine, so. All right. Okay. Pretty much. Well, that's fine. No, we'll let you deal with it. You're the tech guy. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, do I think the exploding barbed wire death match will be pre-taped? Uh, maybe, but I hope not. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. I'm looking forward to Revolution. Yeah, I am as well. Yeah, yes, that match is going to be at Revolution. Yeah. Um, I'll quickly go through go through SmackDown. Um, so Starts off with Edge and Reigns. Reigns takes about three days to get down to the ring. Well, no, yeah. um, Pretty much every week, the beginning of SmackDown for the first 20 minutes is Reigns it, doing an entry. Easily. Yeah, easily. Yeah, easily that long. Um, so they're having a bit of a back and forth. And Sami Zayn comes out and says that he's the real threat. Uh, claims he's going to be going to Mania. And then he gets uh, booted in the face from absolutely nowhere by Jay. Yeah, so it's almost yeah. like uh, Jay was uh, basically saying to Sami Zayn, "Big fucking asshole." Yeah, <laughs> bang in the face, off he went. <laughs> yeah, um, we had Nakamura versus uh, Apollo Cruz. Fine match. Uh, Nakamura yeah. wins, but then Cruz goes on uh, goes on the offensive. Uh, mm. I like Biggie. this, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah, you know, Biggie's telling Apollo Crews that he's, uh, you know, he does. He, he's tried three times. You're not having another shot, but Apollo Crews is uh, making sure that he tries to stay in that picture still, which is, which is good. Um, I like I it, Apollo. Just, yeah, I do as well. It, it it does suit him. I think. Um, I think he's tried it in the past, but he was a bit still a bit too smiley, wasn't he? Um, yeah. But now he's a. Uh, He's a proper Marty House heel, so I like it. It perhaps went on a bit too long, this bit. Um, yeah, uh, Rollins comes out. He's keeping that music by the looks of it, which... Yeah, I, I was surprised about to be honest, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I thought that was just a, a one-time thing to try and make people think that he was turning face when actually he's not. Uh, says that he... He isn't respected. He's been betrayed by his friends uh, and pretty much calls out Cesaro. Um, we had a basically a running th theme throughout the night where Edge would speak to the Elimination Chamber competitors all throughout the night because any one of them could uh, could end up going to to WrestleMania, and Edge still hasn't decided his opponent. But I still think it's going to be Reigns, isn't it? Just a quick note yeah. on Reigns. What do you think he whispered? I think he challenged Edge to get a high score. <laughs> I, think, I think he leaned in. You think he did? Hey, can I do a kid to high score, Blue? I do. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, watch the watch the clip back of Edge and Reigns. And uh, when Reigns leans into Edge's ear, that's definitely what he says. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's why Edge or he says the other thing. What? <laughs> He says the other thing. I mean this. Shut up, you big fucking asshole. Yeah. <laughs> either or, really. Could have, could have been yeah. either or. <laughs> um, something that um, piqued my interest a little bit. So when Edge had his little backstage bit with Baron Corbin, I think Baron Corbin's potentially um, given us a, maybe a potential gimmick change here. Now Good. Yeah. he mentioned he mentioned that he was wearing an expensive suit and that he'd got this expensive ring on. Now, outside of wrestling, um, I, I've uh, Baron Corbin is really into kind of fine whiskies and cigars and expensive watches and stuff. And I actually think that would be a really cool gimmick for him because that's how yeah. he is in real life. Uh, sure. Need to drop this king gimmick. It's been going on for too long. 
Um, so yeah, I, need, yeah, I don't know whether that was another, a, another King of the Ring tournament. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't know whether this was a potential um, gimmick change here for, for Corman. But we'll see. We'll I'll keep an eye on that one. Um, probably the low point for me of uh, of SmackDown was the ding dong hello with Bailey. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not into. I'm not into this shit. I've got to be honest with that. No, I just it's, they're just all a bit all over the place, aren't they? You had it started off with Nia and Shayna, and then um, there was a match. Reginald said, "Oh, let's have a let's have a let's have a match." So he teamed up with. Banks and Bianca Belair, who also came out during that segment. Um, Reginald gets the pin on Nia. Um, yeah. They mentioned the, the her, her landing on her hole again. So uh, it's been done already. You know, it's been over a week yeah. now. And, well, it they're is. on every show. They've been on every show this week, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I, you know, I, I like Bailey. I think it's quite funny, but yeah, I did go on oh. a bit, didn't it? I like Bailey. I think she's great. She's a good heel. I'm just not sure about these segments. Like, I'm not great. I'm not keen on Ms. TV and all that sort of thing. But no. that's me. Um, then, uh, yeah, the main main event of the night was uh, Sami Zayn, Baron Corbin, Jey Uso versus Cesaro, Daniel Bryan, and Kevin Owens. Talent. Hmm. That's all I can say about. Yeah, that. unbelievable Super amount of talent. All of Massive. them. I and I include Corbin in that. I like Baron good. Corbin. Oh, so, I like Baron Corbin, yeah. Yeah. One weird thing I did notice uh, was Cesaro tried to do the swing on Corbin. Didn't oh, quite yeah. happen. Corbin's a big guy. It cut to a break. It came back from the break, and they're just swinging. So my guess is that in the ad break, they kind of got it going, and they were like, right, go, go, Corbin. Yeah, yeah. And there he was. They were just swinging around. So that was a, that was a little bit strange. Um, the face team win. Um, Daniel Bryan making Sammy taps up. Feels like Daniel Bryan's first win for ages. I might be wrong there. Yeah, um, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then everyone does a move on each other, and it ends with Roman Reigns coming from absolutely nowhere and walloping Edge, giving him the yeah. biggest spear I've seen for a while. So <laughs> that is how we ended SmackDown. Yeah, yeah. I think we're gonna. I think it's gonna be Reigns versus Edge at WrestleMania. I think that's definitely the way they're gonna go. My worry is that Edge doesn't win, but um, mm. yeah. See what happens. Yeah, yeah. that was the you know, classic um, post again. Lumps like Boy Rumble post, you know, uh, pre-show. Yeah, uh, Rumble at the end of the show. If that makes sense. Like everyone's exactly yeah. to get some movies in, and then you know it ends, and yeah, just tease it for the for the pay per view. So, yeah, I, I also as well some that just very quickly. I, did we see a heel turn from Otis and Gable? Uh yeah, potentially, yeah. Seem like I think it. I think Otis needs needs it. He needs something because you're yeah. gonna get so far on his like comedy based gimmick. Definitely, and he could be a really powerful dominant heel, couldn't he? You know, he's yeah. a strong, yeah. strong old boy. That's done right, yeah, boy. definitely. Yeah. Than me. <laughs> so, yeah, and that was this week in wrestling. Yeah. yeah so, um, interesting week. We've got the elimination chamber coming up uh, this Sunday. Um, we will be live. Tomorrow night um, on Facebook and our Twitch channel also yeah. for the Elimination Chamber pre-show before the pre-show. And pre -pre uh, that is where we are going to be doing our predictions. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's what we're going to do. I think that's what we should do going forward. I think we should uh, save our predictions for the live show. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, all for that. Before the pay-per-views and then obviously the podcast before because... We've been rattling on for two hours now. People are probably yeah. sick to death of us. Yeah, it's been a long one. It's been a long one this week. So, uh, yeah, it's been a good one, though. But join us um, on the Powered 4 TV Facebook, the Games and Graps Facebook, and twitch.tv forward slash Games and Graps. Yep. But uh, yep, for yep. now, yeah, this has been episode 133 of the Games and Graps podcast. We are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts across podcast services everywhere. Spins internet gone again. It looks like it doesn't. <laughs> I'll do it from everywhere. 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 <laughs> everywhere. 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 All, all the everywhere. All, all the time. We need to out. <laughs> <laughs> and Facebook and YouTube as well. So uh, we'll be live. We'll see you tomorrow night. 
for the live show and we'll be back next week for episode 134 um i'm sunny i'm finn i'm steve and we will indeed see you next week take it easy guys goodbye thanks very much goodbye Anal beads.